This is Open to Hope Radio, featuring Dr. Gloria Horsley and her daughter, Dr. Heidi Horsley, coming to you on behalf of the Open to Hope Foundation, dedicated to those who are looking for hope after loss. Welcome to the Open to Hope Show in partnership with the Compassionate Friends. I'm your host, Dr. Heidi Horsley, with my mother and co-host, Dr. Gloria Horsley. Hi, Heidi. Matt here in California. Hi, Mom. Um, You're in New York? I am. We are going to have a great guest and a friend of ours on today. And she's from Florida, right? She is. She lives in Florida right now. Um, her name is Lydia Uben. And we're going to talk today, Mom, about transforming your life after loss. Uh, Lujia is great. I know she knows a lot about that, so I'm looking forward to the show. Lujia is the founder of My Meaningful Life and is the executive director of the Center of Transforming Lives in Miami, Florida. She is also an Open to Hope writer, and she is a professional certified grief and life coach, a fellow in thanatology, death, dying, and bereavement, and a fellow of the American Academy of Grief Counseling. So welcome to the show, Lujia. Thank you. Thank you so much. So good to talk to you. And uh, I wanted to know, uh, how did you get into the field of grief and loss? It was inspired by the death of my father, whom I lost when I was 12 years old. And uh, I carry that in my heart. I'm not knowing what what the future will bring to me, no? But when I start, you know, start studying psychology and religious studies and death and dying, I just felt in my heart, that that was my calling. And I knew that it was, it was inspired by that huge loss. So he is uh, my, he's my star that I carry in my heart. Yes. Uh, I love that, the star, because it's a bright, shiny thing rather than a negative, dark thing without hope. Um, they do transform us, don't they? Absolutely, yes, and it is beautiful what you said, because instead of remaining in a dark place, that that's how we feel when we have just lost our loved one, very dark. However, we can just transform that and be in that, that beautiful light, that beautiful inspiration that guides us mm-hmm. in our lives and also helping others to be inspired by their own losses. I, I love so, that. They really are our guiding lights. I love that idea. Well, you got... 11 Principles of Transformation. I know if people go to your fabulous website. The website is the 11 Principles of Transformation. It's one one, the number, dot com. Transforming has to do with transforming loss, the loss we are experiencing into growth. That's how I see it because, you know, the, the, and the principles, they were introduced in the book. And that's why this is so meaningful because the book was dedicated to my father. And then, you know, I introduced the system there, which is system, no? And I was writing them. I was writing them. And then when I finished, I said, yes, this is it, 11. That's it. And Gloria and Heidi, from my heart, I tell you that when I finished 11 principles, I was taken by that because I said, wow, my father, because he died on an 11-11, November 11th. And I finished. There was no more principles, period. And I said, wow. Wow. So you know how it is, no? The the meaning that we find in symbols and signs. So for me, that was very precious. And what are the, the ones that, you know, that are the most important? I would say that I start with accepting the loss. And sometimes is the hardest one, but sometimes people think that accepting something is is being happy it happened or it's being glad. And I say, no, no, it is not that you're happy. It is just that you acknowledge, well, this is my reality. This is what has happened to me. Because otherwise, if we do not accept the, 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 your new you, no, the new reality, then there's no way you can transform it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so that would be the, the, the needed one, no? the, like the first one. And, uh, and I also like a lot the, the third principle because that has to do with your spiritual dimension. And I, I talk there about the importance of three spiritual tools that I feel are so important, which is forgiveness, 
gratitude and love. Mm. Mm. I love for that. me, are those things that for me, love is the most powerful emotion you know, in life, and uh, I believe that those those spiritual tools or elements are really important in our in our grieving and healing process. Mm. Does love come into play in the healing process? Love first, and I say this in a video that I just did not too long ago, that when we talk about having our loved one, not that we lose someone we love, we may lose them physically, Mm -hmm. but love is eternal. And you know that. You know, you do know that. Love is eternal. So when we can take that love that we feel in our hearts for that special person, and we take that and we we just base on that love, honor that person, and finding that meaning and making those changes that are beautiful, inspired by love. So that's how I feel that is the most powerful. My father died more than 40 years ago. I was 12. I am 56 now. Mm-hmm. And I'm seeing him have his picture now in my center. And he lives in my heart. Yeah. He does. His love is here. So, yeah. You know, I love to hear you say this, Lugia, because there are so many people that say, I'm, I will never get over it. I'll never be happy again. Or, you know, and uh, I, I don't know. I am happy. And, and you sound wonderfully happy. And you're happy, right, Heidi? Uh, yeah, I'm definitely happy, and I, I and I have transformed my loss. I don't necessarily think that I'm over Scott. I, I don't want to be over him. I'm over all the pain, mm. but I have I have transformed. I mean, I continue a bond with him in a new and different way, and he is still a guiding light, and he's a huge part of my life, and he always will be. Yeah, oh, that's beautiful. Because yes, and that's a thing that, and what he just you know said, Gloria, too that. That's one of the greatest fears that people have sometimes. I just had that, you know, that experience actually this past Friday. It's a young, young woman that she lost her mother. And it's, it's that fear, you know, and that, you know, I, I hear, you know, very, very common if we are going to be happy again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And yes, that may be a fear because at that moment we are grieving very very strongly and and at that moment we are experiencing very strong emotions so everything has its time if we allow ourselves to open our hearts and just what you say you know open to hope what can i say that you know so you open your heart you open your heart for that hope and for that happiness that will come as you as you know as we realize that that love lives in us and there mm-hmm. is some purpose how we're going to make that happen. So when we just have sh- that shift and transform that, then that can bring happiness to our lives. Well, I know that you had a bad accident because we were planning on seeing you at the Association of Death Educators, and you had a terrific accident. It was very serious. Yeah, it was last year. I was crossing the street, and I was hit by a car. Mm. Yes, and, you know, I lost consciousness. My my head, you know, was open, and uh, I needed reconstructive surgery in one of my legs. So I'm so grateful to God that I'm alive. I am so grateful. And, you know, that it was, you know, extremely serious. And the thing is that when I opened my, my eyes, that I regained consciousness, and it was that sense of being so amazingly grateful. For being alive, and uh, and I think that that sense of gratitude, of being you know in that aspect, was that what helped me heal from my inside out. You know, with that in that accident. It sounds like you use some of the eleven principles of transformation in in your own healing process after you were hit by this car. Absolutely, and you know what? That it is so interesting because. It's not that I thought, like, okay, you know, I'm going to think this is principle one and this is principle two. You know, it is, it, they came out, you know, out of my heart because I found myself doing that a lot, doing that processing, you know, and doing that a lot. And it's, you know, the first one, you know, was, you know, accepting what happened to me. And it was super strong, it was really strong. 
And it's interesting also, I'm going to bring that, uh, what you call open to hope. I always had hope that I would walk again. Mm-hmm. Always. And it was like, it never occurred to me, oh no, I will not walk. No, I was so happy, so excited, and so grateful to God. So, and, and you know, the, the love, and, you know, and being grateful and forgiven, you know, what happened, you know, it, it, it happened, that's it. You know, I, I led it to God, that's it, that happened. And I went through my grief, you know, went through the process, you know, of going that. And also, every single day, I was extremely, extremely grateful. And so, and I did, you know, the different principles, you know, I took care of myself, I shared with others, I expressed my feelings, which is principle four, because I do not believe in pretending, I believe in communicating, and so I found myself using them with the, throughout the process, throughout the process, yes. Yeah. Uh, how about the person that hit you? Um, uh how did you feel about them? And and because I think people get so stuck sometimes in anger and and shame, and they get involved in lawsuits and all sorts of things going on. It that uh, I see people sometimes not moving along in the process. No, I, I do not believe at all in keeping grudges for, for anything. I don't believe in that. I, I think that you know, and I be I, you know, I don't believe that these things you know you know are on purpose. You know. No, things happen in life. Things happen. And it's up to us. If we keep, you know, bitter, or how come, how, no. Because, you know, that is not good for our heart, and that's my philosophy, you know. Good for our hearts and our souls. No. I love to be in peace, and to live in peace, and to live grateful, and letting go of any 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 thought or sentiment that it doesn't agree with that. Because, again, you know, when things happen, you know, sometimes, you know, you don't plan things, and they happen. So I don't, I, I couldn't keep any bad feeling that it was not produced, you know, there, yeah. It didn't happen, yeah. I know that you are Hispanic and work a lot with the Hispanic community, and I was wondering... Can you tell us a little bit about, are there differences in the way people in the Hispanic community grieve? And and if so, what are they? Yes, I'm Hispanic. I'm from Nicaragua, actually, living in Miami. And, Hisp- well, you know that losses are universal. And we all grieve, you know, because it's the, you know, the, the, the natural norm and unique response to a loss. And I say unique because, yes, it is unique for each individual. However, there are ways that had to do with our culture mm-hmm. that is how we express, I would say, the grief, how we express it. And in the, and again, you know, this is general, not saying everybody does it, no, but in general, no, that we Hispanics are, you know, we tend to be very expressive, you mm-hmm. know, the way, the way we, we say the things and carry on, you know, uh, what we do. And our traditions, you know, tend to be like more, in a, let's say, the mourning aspect, you know, more into traditional, more into, you know, wearing black clothing, more into things that express how we feel to others and very communicative. You know, that's the way we generally are because we carry on our values and traditions and sometimes living outside of our country and living, for example, in the United States, out of um, for country of origins, we we keep the values and traditions that we had in our countries to have the same type of you know funerals if we can or viewing if we can. Sometimes, of course, we have our restrictions because of the the different. Um, ways that they are carrying on here, but some cultures, for example, the Mexican culture, that they have even mariachis, you know, this band of musicians, sometimes they bring them to the viewing or at times if they are allowed, you know, to cemeteries because they want to keep their traditions because, you know, that that gives us value. So we have different ways and based on the different um, Latin American countries, there are different ways, you know, for the viewing, some people are more solemn, you know, very, very quiet, very solemn. Other places, you know, they bring food. Like when my father died in Nicaragua, there was no food, you know. And in my times, so the viewing was at home. 
So it has to do with that. If it's in a in a small city, or if it's in a big city, you know, a small city sometimes they give you know liquor and alcohol and you know uh, little cookies, and they carry the the casket throughout, you know, from the view into the cemetery. So it's different, you know. But the expression. We tend to be more expressive. Mm-hmm. Even more expressive. If, you know, yeah. Well, I've also noticed. I live in New York City, and I've also noticed when somebody dies here, if even if it's if it's outside or inside, they will go to wherever either they died or where they live, outside the apartment, and people will create amazing shrines. I guess it's called shrines. People will bring candles and stuffed animals, and all and pictures of the person that died, and create these amazing places. Memor- it's a memorial, really, and you can go and just. You know, it brings people there, even strangers. We go and just pay tribute to that person that died, and I love this ritual. Yeah, thank you. Yes, because it's like altars, you know, because we have them at homes also, domestic altars, and as you call it as well, you know, shrines. Yes, because, okay. Yes, it is a way to honoring, you know, honoring our loved one. Yes. So, you know, it has to do with a lot of expression, and also when someone dies and people cannot, you know, uh, um, uh, you know, afford, let's say, the, the, the funeral, or they have to send the, the you know, the, the, the party, you know, to the country of origin, people come in and they pinch in and they, and they help, they contribute, you know, to, to, to the funeral or to be sent, you know, the body to the country of origin. So it, it is a lot of people coming together. Yes. Well, Lydia, where can people find you if they would like to, to find you and use your services? Okay, I am in Miami, Florida. The website that has my name, it's L-I-G-I-A-H-O-U-B-S-M-B-O-Y-E-N.com. Great, and you and you run the center, you are the executive director for the Center of Transforming Lives. Yeah, I am, yeah, I am the founder. You the know, founder, I, I founded very good. The center, and where, you know, we also do meditation classes, working with the bereaved, working with people like, you know, embracing life again. That's my purpose in life, you know, that we go through grief because it is important to recognize grief and to give that opportunity to every single person. Sometimes society doesn't allow us you know, to express our grief, but we need to do it. But once we do that and we work through that, then to open our hearts again, to keep that love as a flame, as a star, to keep on embracing life again, and then we are able to transform our loss and transform our life. Thank you, Lydia, and thank you so much for, for talking about how we can transform our lives after loss. We want to thank everybody for listening to our show today, and Heidi and I always want to remind you that if you've lost hope, please lean on ours until you find your own, and God bless. You've been listening to Open to Hope Radio, hosted by Drs. Gloria and Heidi Horsley. Like today's edition, all of our past programs are available on demand at opentohope.com along with helpful articles, videos, resources, and links to help get you through the toughest time of your life. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter and sign up for our monthly newsletter. Again, that's opentohope.com. Check it out today. Then be sure to stop by next Thursday at 9 a.m. Pacific Time when we'll be posting another edition of Open to Hope Radio. Remember, others have been where you are. They made it through, and you can too, as long as you're open to hope.